Welcome to Embedded World 2023. Here at the Toradex booth, my name is Daniel Lang and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Toradex. Uh, you have lots of stuff at your booth. Uh, lots of stuff, yeah. So here, uh, our droid, um, it's tracking your face, so it's, it's watching me. And, you know, say hi, and we, we did that with our uh, Maven kit. So it uses our system on module uh, with the wording IMX8 M+, which has a neural network processor. And we integrated that in a very nice kit, including a camera either from Econ system or vision component. Uh, we have a very modular uh, backplane where you can have power over Ethernet. Uh, RS485 uh, and so on and the whole thing will be it's in a case so you can actually deploy it uh, in, a, in, a, in a real field so you can put it on your factory floor on a tractor and so on and that's there in the head of, uh, of our friend here. It's useful to have uh, networking in this kind of stuff? Yes so really nowadays everything is connected uh, you want to get data for the processing all the AI is on the device but then maybe you want to you know you want to know which products are good if there is a criminal around or something like that so the metadata you get off but the processing is on the device uh, and this uh, actually board and even the droid is from our partner ozone which uh, have a software feature which lets you optimize your neural networks which you have maybe in TensorFlow or PyTorch it lets you optimize for our hardware so it runs very efficiently on this this model and depending on the application we can do up to uh, 300 frames per second so yeah maybe have we can have a look a little bit closer to the module itself so that's just a card so let's uh, walk here on the way uh, we have some demos from our customer, uh, so that's uh, from Emphasis, and that's a pollen analyzer. Uh, so they, they use a microfluid technology to analyze pollen, and with that you can have more productive uh, trees and fields, so it helps growing more food without using a lot of chemicals and so on. And they're still a startup and they're very innovative. And they use our hardware, but they also use our Horizon platform, which I can show you a, a little bit later. But Horizon basically allows you to have a very fast innovation loop. So you can develop something, you have tools for development, and then you can deploy it in a very secure field out to the field to these devices. And they're connected, and they found every couple months, they found new ways how they can use the technology and they can update their devices, make them more capable over time. So very similar than what Tesla is doing with their cars, they're doing that here on a scientific instrument. So you're all about enabling very innovative stuff? Yes, we are really, we enable this company that has a lot of PhD in that technology to, uh, you know, to build a product. Because you still need embedded computing, you need Linux, you need to do security update, you need a UI and all of that. And we really help with that. So Emphasis can focus on their uh, like core compet uh, competency. And then here also uh, a device, we do a lot, uh, uh, you know, automation, it's a small robot, uh, we do a lot of medical uh, things, and here you can also actually see what, what's in there, so there's our module, and a Apalis module, a display, and then of course it also controls uh, uh, the, the, the system, and then, you know, you have a touch screen, uh, very nice here, it's running, so I don't know, I probably shouldn't interrupt it. Uh, maybe I, I can try and see what happens. Pause, you know, continue. So you have a UI and this also mic. Also so very innovative. Yes. Very special. Yeah. And, and also, even this one, are kind of, you know, you need to do updates. They use more uh, remote uh, offline updates at the moment, but also here we have a very secure solution. So you're not corrupting the device, you don't break the device, because that's a no-go uh, in, in a lab. Then uh, let, let's go to our uh, to our uh, Here you see an overview of our uh, models, and let me try to pull in uh, our uh, hardware product manager. Sorry, I still show. 
Uh, so, Hi. So that's Simon, our uh, uh, hardware product manager, and he can tell you a little bit more uh, about our models. So this is our portfolio of system or modules. Um, you see three product families here. Uh, you see our mid-range and high-performance Opalis system on modules. Then moving a little bit uh, to the right side, you also see the Colibris. These are our traditional system on modules from the entry level to a medium performance. And on the right side, there is the Verdin family our latest addition uh, with our brand new word in AM62 module at the bottom. This is something we are introducing uh, right here, launching it at Embedded Word, um, and it offers a very competitive entry point into the word in the family of songs. Competitive entry point. Does that mean good price? What does it mean? It means basically the lowest total cost of ownership. So it means if you purchase our hardware, integrate into your product, deliver it and maintain it over the lifetime, you are going to end up with the lowest total cost. So it's not specifically the lowest price of hardware. That's an important differentiation. There's also, a, when I look here, it's an A72, it's a big chip, it's powerful. You, you do everything from powerful to smaller. Yeah, so scalability is an important concept for us. Uh, we try to lay out the portfolio in a way uh, that depending on your needs, uh, you can go from the entry level and scale up to the high performance, and we provide a nice coverage uh, for all of your needs there, basically. If people want uh, just one, they can go ahead. It's possible to all kinds of quantities. How does it work to start working with you? Yeah, so we are trying to facilitate it from the beginning. We provide uh, extensive uh, technical support with all the materials. We have products focusing on facilitating evaluation. Uh, so you can order evaluation products that make it easy for you uh, to wire up your hardware, experiment with the hardware. If you feel you are more working on a software level, then pick a different product which is better suited for that. In terms of availability, all of our products are long-term available, 10 years, 15 years. We have that commitment uh, publicly documented on our websites. And this is one of the key values customers are keeping coming back to the product. So if people want this, what, what would be the package maybe they would get? So this is a song on its own. The package we would propose to take would be one uh, development intended carrier board. Uh, like our traditional Verdin development board, which is uh, visible elsewhere. Um, we would offer some accessories there, and we would offer a starting package. Maybe we would select one configuration out of the many, depending on the concrete needs of the customers we would be discussing before ordering with our team. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, so maybe I can also pick a little bit my favorite here. So that's uh, Mellow. So that's one of the carrier boards for the Verdin module. You can plug it in. And that board uh, is good for prototypes, but it's also great for low volume uh, manufacturing. So most of our customers, they design their own carrier board. But if you only have a few hundreds, you maybe just want to use uh, directly something like that. And you can see a lot of common interfaces extension connectors, it's very compact, um, so it's kind of, and it's brand new, so I, I like it a lot. And it's all, you can get all the resources, so you can also use that as a starting point and then modify it for your needs. If you want to have all the connector or remove some of the connectors. And uh, so basically, if you want to go from there and just do something very specific, they can start there, but then they can ask you, how do I be more specific and optimize for that? Exactly. You can, you can see here we have a lot of different ports, and all of them are fully open. So you can just download the, the Altium design files and go from there. And you can do that them, yourself, or we also have a partner network which can help you. So if you said, oh, I need a, you know, a smaller or a bigger board, or I need different interfaces, or I need two Ethernet, and so on. It's very, very easy to do that. Nice. Um, yeah, so maybe have a look at some of our uh, other demos here, just two. Uh, this is a pretty cool one. This is for visually impaired people. And um, that's actually a, a 3D, it's an Intel RealSense. Uh, and then our uh, product is in here. 
and I can already feel it, it vibrates, so it actually detects the environment and then it gives you here on these microphones, it's not real microphones, it's going on your cheekbones and it vibrates and it gives the visually impaired uh, a sense of the environment so you don't run into stuff. What's the resolution? They can, can, they, they can see walls? They can see obstacles. Yes, so and, I. And by uh, sound, by, by Yeah, vibration. exactly. It vibrates, and if you try it out, it's very weird, so you need a little bit training. And, you know, I can see, so for me it's hard to use, but you, you, you can do that. Uh -huh. and, and it's from our, uh, you know, uh, from our uh, customer here. Uh, Is this like in mass production? Uh, yes, you can go on people, their website and buy like, it. People use it, yes. and it's changing lives. Yeah, it, it really helps uh, you know, the visually impaired uh, to I navigate better. have a high resolution, yeah. Uh, it'd be awesome if you know, eventually blind people can see. But uh, Yeah, no, I, I think here it's more like not running into things. But I, I'm, I'm not a specialist on this one yet. So another nice demo here uh, is from Practica. It's an oven and it's super fast. So you can make cross sauce and pizza. I don't think anything is running. And I'm also probably not the right guy, uh, you know, uh, to demo it. But you can have recipes uh, and, and, and do that. And yes, it uses microwave and heat and everything. And it's also fully connected. And this is used in some really, really big sandwich chains and coffee chains and some really big uh, customers so, uh, worldwide and also uses our Horizon platform with our models. So here you can actually see their control unit, uh, you know, where you can set that, it uses Horizon, so it's connected so they can do over the air updates, they can improve it, uh, they can monitor it, uh, you know, what's, what's going on, how many times it's used, when they need maintenance, so they can do predictive maintenance on it and so on. And then here you see our module integrated. And that's a good example of a custom uh, carrier board. Nice. It looks awesome. So there's special oven technology and they want to do cutting edge uh, UI for it and stuff. Right? Yeah, not just the UI, the control of the whole oven. And you also have coffee machines and things like that uh, doing that. Here you can see our uh, uh, the display ecosystem. Uh, you want to talk short? Uh, it's on video. Hey, it's another uh, hardware product manager. Hi. And maybe you can really brief talk a little bit about our uh, display yes. ecosystem. So you can get the pitch with me as well. Yeah. So <laughs> we're working on making this uh, displays easier for our. Um, uh, for our industrial uh, partners. So we're partnering with multiple display providers. Today we're showing off uh, Riverdi displays where we are able to guarantee availability of these displays for five plus years. Our ecosystem is made out, out of the standardized spin-out that you can see here with the display adapter that you can add on a mezzanine or that we integrated directly in our newest carrier, volume carrier board for Verdin, uh, the Mallow. Um, so we work on getting that ecosystem up and running and available for our customers uh, during this year with an availability of more than five years so that they can uh, work with DSI as a native interface and as the primary display interface of, Verde, of the Verdin family. Because when you have displays, you have to run them, you have to run the touch, maybe, exactly. all the different things. Exactly. And yeah. it's a way to integrate it. Exactly. So, so what we do really, we accelerate your time to market, to partner up with this display. So they work basically plug and play, so they're easy to integrate. And then of course, you also work with Crank, Qt, Slint, Flutter and all these uh, UI frameworks, so you can do the UI very, very simple. Nice. Good? Okay. Yeah, so, so maybe have a look a little bit on our software. We are really one of the main differentiators from uh, Toradex to other thumb vendors is our software. And um, here you see a uh, typical, we try to emulate a typical developer desk, maybe a home office. Uh, and here you, you can see how we integrate our software, how we make it uh, fast. So we are integrated with Visual Studio Code. So it's a very popular, very productive, modern environment. Uh, but I think Drew, uh, just finishing up, can uh, talk a little bit more about the, the highlights. So Drew, what, what can we see here on, on your... Uh... 
All right, great. Yeah, so what we're looking at here, this is the, de the, the developer desk. So this is kind of the, the, the central view of what a, a, a software developer using the Terizon system would look like. So this is just my, my Ubuntu laptop with all the tools that are needed to, to develop applications, to develop the custom operating system, and to just generally to work with the Terizon system as a software developer. So the, the, the first thing that we have First thing that most developers get is we're going to create a new project. So I'll just bring this window up. These are all the project template types that we support out of the box. Um, so if you need to create a Python app or a Qt app, we have templates in place to allow you to quickly get up and running uh, with any of the with, with any of these project types. So you don't have to be an expert on containers or on Linux or on Yocto to be able to start deploying your application quickly onto the device. So let's jump over here. I've got a uh, basic Python Hello World app that I can bring up. And so as a Python developer, all I care about is my, my uh, high quality uh, Python source code. I don't need to know the, the complexity, like I say, of containers or anything. I come in here and I start writing my code. I'm ready to debug. I hit the F5 button. It's going to copy the device. It's going to copy the code over. It's going to hide all that complexity from me. It's going to package it as a container. It's going to deploy it to the board, allow me to do source level debug just as if it were code running here natively on my desktop. Once I'm then happy with it, I commit it to my local Git repo. I push it to the cloud and GitHub. We have reference implementations with our CI CD system, or excuse me, with the GitHub CI CD system, GitHub workflows, so that when I push new changes, it can automatically be configured to do a cloud-based build to check out and deploy, say, to a QA group of devices. QA does their work, and then the, then they push the changes up one level further. The, the, the changes then get checked out and uh, pushed up to the Horizon platform for deployment to the entire production fleet. You think most uh, developers will use the Visual Studio? Um, or they I, can use other? There are probably, I don't know if it's 50-50, there are some people that are used to Yocto, used to a traditional command line. Maybe they're coming in with some, co some uh, code and container setups already that might not use this directly. They might use it for inspiration, but anybody coming in that's, say, coming from Windows CE or some other environment uh, that doesn't know this environment, uh, that, that, those are the people who are, who are we are really targeting with it, with, with this uh, Visual Studio Code extension. And you support all a whole bunch of platforms, uh, 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 like um, people who prefer that or this. They can work with what they like. Yeah, in fact, that that those templates that we showed at the very beginning. The idea is that they're easy to generate. So if you if you have need for a specific application type that's not supported by our templates, it's easy to create a new template for your your specific uh, framework or whatever whatever it might be. Cool. Thanks a lot. Right. So now we talked a lot about the developer uh, experience, so let's get a little bit the bigger picture overview. And for that, let's, uh, let's go to our wall here. Here. I, I, I take this here. Our skin. So here you can basically see the overview of our Horizon platform. So before we withdrew, we were actually at the developer uh, location here. And there you could see the, the Visual Studio integration. Um, and you can also see that we have uh, our Horizon core offering. So that's the, the basic Linux. It's Yocto based. Linux fully open source. And you can use that, pull that in. And then, for example, you need a Qt or a Codesys or a Crank or AI. And that's all provided as a container. So it's very easy to integrate. And then as Drew showed here on the Visual Studio place, uh, that's integrated, so you develop like you would develop on a, on a desktop. And why did we do that? It's really to make it easy for people coming from Windows, Windows CE, web applications, and so on. So they can easily move to an embedded device and can be very productive. Then we have a very secure way to de deliver uh, your software to your end devices. And we use something, a framework, uh, I mean, the whole thing we call Horizon, but the framework below is Optane, and Optane is very secure. It's actually built for state-level attack, and it's commonly used in the automotive industry. And then also we have a way back to get information like device monitoring, remote tech, uh, access, and so on. We see that here um, later. Um, yeah, and then we have fleet. So most of the demos you see here, 
the brewery and the agriculture and the, the medical and the beer and the coffee machine, they're all connected. And maybe I can uh, show you that here. Um, I can give you a, a, a very short overview. So that's our control panel. So for example, before we were at the oven, so you can here see what the oven is doing, how many recipes they process, like the current, you know, the CPU. Uh, I think you can also see the, uh, you know, preheating thing, if the door is open and so on. So you can use that for uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, you can do remote offsets, you can push uh, OTAs here uh, and so on. So nice. if uh, let's, it's all about security. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of security and we have our security expert here and maybe let me trust try to steal it. Okay. Uh, so so uh, John lead our Horizon platform, so the uh, you know the, the, the stuff in the cloud. Uh, team and he's also our uh, security expert. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the security philosophy behind the uh, Horizon platform. All right. So I would say if there's uh, if there's something that defines the philosophy we take, it's that we try to do the hard thing first and then work to make it easier. And especially when it comes to security around uh, software updates, it is a topic that can sounds simple when you first look at it, but gets just devilishly complex and has a lot of implementation pitfalls. And if there's one thing that I would, I would like people to know about, uh, about software updates, um, I think people usually start with an assumption that, hey, if I sign my updates, I'm fine. If I worry about some transport security and I sign some updates, I'm going to be okay. And that is an attitude that tends to work well until it really doesn't. The core of any software update system is actually about securely communicating repository state from, uh, from your remote repository that can attest the validity of software you have to install to the device in a secure way that considers uh, that considers the timeliness of updates, that considers the pertinence and compatibility if you have a multi-ECU uh, update scenario. And actually dealing with all of those things and working with all of those edge cases is genuinely a dev devilishly difficult prospect. So my background, I, I worked in the automotive industry for, uh, for quite some time, working with safety critical. Uh, and usually updates. cars, you can just uh, click, you, you log into them, you can hack them like in five seconds. Or, That's, uh, so <laughs> that used to be like that, right? I, I would say that that is something that uh, very much woke up the, the automotive industry. I mean, the famous, uh, famous G-Pack in, uh, in, I want to say 2014, really marked a turning point. And in fact, uh, that was a, a big part of the impetus for the Uptane project, which uh, was when the automotive industry essentially got together um, to figure out what should we do to, uh, to worry about update security in our, uh, in our vehicles. And they contacted uh, folks at the, at the Secure Systems Lab at, uh, at NYU Tandon, uh, at the SSRI uh, Institute in, in Michigan, and developed an extension to the update framework, which is a cloud native uh, computing foundation and Linux foundation project that is kind of the gold standard for software update repositories, um, and how you would extend that for the automotive case where you need to um, you need to have central direction and control of updates, you need to update secondaries. And so the development of that standard started in 2017. I worked, uh, I worked pretty closely on it. Uh, Toradex uh, ended up recruiting me because they were interested in that system. And uh, our update system at Toradex is now based on the Uptane standard. So we deliver updates signed with two independent chains of metadata, one that attests um, software validity uh, and timeliness and consistency and, and all of these guarantees, and another independent metadata chain that attests the actual installation instructions. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can probably tell I'm pretty passionate about software update security. Um, so the, the Horizon has the full 
security, the secure updates forever. When you have all these cool devices, potentially they could be updated forever, stay safe, and it just works. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is the this is the thing that I, I mentioned. We we try to do the hard thing first and then make it easy. So when you get to the really hard questions about repository state. Um, it turns out that practical research on flaws in software update systems, often what it comes down to is flaws in key management. And another common mistake that you see in update systems in the wild is thinking that, okay, I, can, I have a PKI management system. I can manage uh, signing software updates with my existing X509 uh, certs. I can, do it with my centralized key management system. Um, there are some special needs of software update systems that demand some difference in, um, in how you deal with that. So one of the things that's built in from the start is the ability to, uh, to rotate keys and sign changes in the, uh, the trust relationships of the repository. Which is a long way of saying, when you start up and you sign up for a Terizon platform account, you, uh, you connect your devices to it. Um, you can see here we have, uh, we have some actual devices connected. Um, those devices, the root of trust, is actually managed by us. It's online. You can click to update a package. You can click upload a, a new software binary, use our tools, whatever. However, um, you don't want to have a single point of failure in a software update system. What if you have a developer who left credentials to this system on a sticky note? Um, what you can do for your devices in production is take all of your signing keys offline uh, so that when you are ready to do production releases of software, you can have a, a, a prod repository that has an extremely limited set of software that there's only these specific versions which get secure attestations from the device of exactly what software is running, only these ones are authorized. And it doesn't matter, even, even uh, you know, our developers, even if you had complete access to our systems, as long as you have those key, key keys, uh, those important signing keys offline, well, uh, you are fundamentally safe. And the pitfall that people get into with signing offline. And I think that a lot of people who, uh, who start rolling their own update system with RAUC or SW update end up with troubles with the signing keys. You lose a key, it gets compromised, somebody loses it. What is your strategy for rotating it effectively on the device? And our software update client handles that automatically, transparently, which is what lets you start with an online key and then roll it offline without pain. That sounds awesome. So uh, hopefully maybe you have 100% uh, security support eventually. Yeah. It's difficult, but. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, you can see we're really thinking a lot about it. We're spending a lot of time. We choose like the hard way a little bit to make it easy for our customer. And we really, we're not, like uh, a lot of people would say it's maybe, is it overkill for what you do? But we are not doing consumer grade IoT. So we really do critical devices, we do medical devices, we do industrial. So if something happens, the damage is huge. So that's the reason we go that way. But, uh, really care yeah. about yeah, and, about and the thing is, platform. yes, and we know all about that and all about the, uh, the thing to make it easy for our customers, so they do not need to have all that pain uh, themselves. We go uh, for that, and we have people here who love the pain to go through <laughs> that and, and the make it easy. Horizon keeps improving. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean this is the thing, right? So like a lot of our customers, they choose Horizon so they can update their system, but of course also on our side we need to you know keep an eye on everything and you know update it and, and you know get better. So like maybe one last word. So we talk a lot about security, which is extremely important, but the other thing our customers really care about is reliability. And for that, really just really brief. So we are actually very confident about uh, reliability, and, and we just. Uh, switch the demo here, but you can actually come here, so if you, you know, maybe at the next show, we have here a demo, we say like try to break it, so you can actually try to break our ODR update system. You can pull the power, you can have corrupted files, you can play around and you can win, uh, you know, a USB power bank uh, if you do that. 
So now we are actually just switching our demo to our partner uh, from Blackberry. Uh, QNX, so we're also working uh, with uh, QNX as an alternative uh, software offering on our system. So I don't know if you want to short talk a little bit about you know, what you did with uh, Toronex and you know, how you support uh, our models. Uh, so today we have planned a short demo um, for QNX running on the Toronex Apollo Sport. And we will just show how you can get QNX up and running on the Toronex Sport and um, show a few of our demos and um, profiling options with our IDE, so that's... Ha have anybody been able to break it? That yeah, so so that's software. the order, yeah, so that's still about Horizon. So Horizon is break it. Uh, Bruno, did anybody uh, break it? No, not yet. Hopefully someone can break it, so we find a problem we can fix, but no one yet. Are there good hackers at the embedded world? Maybe. 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 Walking around? Walking around, not here apparently. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. So I, I hope you, you could learn a little bit about uh, our products and our presence uh, at Horizon, about our customer. And, you know, we hope we can work uh, with you very soon and, you know, see you again here. Uh, I, not with you. I think you probably have a very fun job working with all these amazing, interesting projects people have. With uh, We talk about PhDs, they, they have yeah. all these science, all this knowledge, and they want to turn it into a product. Yeah. And you are there to help yeah, them. Yeah, no, that, that's really one of the, the coolest part of the job. And, you know, we also look at, for new people. So you can really work with very innovative companies. There, you know, for example, we have 9T Labs. They do continuous carbon fiber 3D printing. We are in satellite, uh, hypercars, supercars. Yeah, like PhD doing new micro thing. We have we have people using ultrasound to split DNA. Uh, you know, you a lot of wheelchairs. We have yeah, we have wheelchairs. Right? Yeah, we're really helping people. That's also very nice, right? We do a lot of medical devices which really help people. A lot of people getting older, so we have a lot of connected devices helping them. Uh, emphasis we helping generate more food with less, you know, chemicals. Uh, so it's really, really cool to see what all these customers do. And we have over 3,000 customers worldwide. Uh, so it's a very exciting uh, field to work And in. The, the order quantity can be from very few to... Yeah, so our products are used from a couple hundred to a couple uh, 10,000. So our very high volume customer maybe have 70,000 devices a year, or a very low end customer maybe have 100 devices a year and we do everything between. If you go very, very high volume, we can support you uh, to, you know, to do a design-in. So maybe you only have 10,000 pieces at the beginning and then you ramp up, we can help you. And of course, also on the low end, we have very good uh, support. Uh, we are very famous for our online resources. Uh, so even your small company is very easy uh, to, to get started. So not only the universities in Switzerland, but anywhere in the world, if they have some amazing idea and they, they're thinking how to get it done, yeah. to just start contacting Yeah, you. so we, we love to work with university for, I mean, a lot of time, you know, creating startups, uh, have smart people, or they go into companies also for recruiting. So if you are in a university and you need any hardware, contact us. We have special, you can get free hardware, discounted hardware. We have programs, we collaborate on studies, you know, master thesis and so on. So we love to work uh, uh, with universities. And how's it going in Lucerne and your headquarters or the different offices? It's more and more... Yeah, uh, yes, we are... you hiring? Yes, we, we hire, you check our website. Uh, we just uh, went to a bigger office in Brazil, in Campinas. We have a very nice new office. We're just going to move in, in Seattle uh, to a bigger office, uh, the office in in Switzerland is growing, uh, so it's going uh, very well, very well, so very happy about that. Cool, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the tour.